You are listening to Section 1 of A Treatise of Religion by Folk Greville. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Your reader, Michael Armenta. A Treatise of Religion What make these many laws, these reins of power, wherewith mankind thus fettered is and bound, these diverse worships which men's souls deflower, nature and God with novelty confound? Tis ignorance, sin, infidelity, by which we fallen from our creation be. What is the chain which draws us back again, and lifts man up unto his first creation? Nothing in him his own heart can restrain, his reason lives a captive to temptation. Example is corrupt, precepts are mixed, all fleshly knowledge frail and never fixed. It is a light, a gift, a grace inspired, a spark of power, a goodness of the good, desire in him that never is desired, and unity where desolation stood. In us, not of us, a spirit not of earth, fashioning the mortal to immortal birth. His image that first made us in perfection, from angels differing most in time and place, they fell by pride, and we by their infection. Their doom is past, we yet stand under grace. They would be gods, we would their evil know. Man finds a Christ, these angels did not so. Sense of this God, by fear the sensual have, distressed nature crying unto grace, for sovereign reason then becomes a slave, and yields to servile sense her sovereign place, when more or other she affects to be, then as before, seat or shrine of this eternity. Yea, prince of earth, let man assume to be, Nay, more of man, let man himself be God. Yet without God, a slave of slaves is he. To others wonder, to himself a rod. Restless despair, desire, and desolation. The more secure, the more abomination. Then by affecting power, we cannot know him. By knowing all things else, we know him less. Nature contains him not, art cannot show him, opinions, idols, and not God express. Without, in power, we see him everywhere. Within, we rest not till we find him there. Then seek we must, that course is natural, for owned souls to find their owner out. Our free remorses, when our natures fall, when we do well, our hearts made free from doubt, prove service due to one omnipotence, and nature of religion to have sense. Questions, again, which in our hearts arise, since loving knowledge, not humility, Though they be curious, godless, and unwise, yet prove our nature feels a deity. For if these strifes rose out of other grounds, man were to God as deafness is to sounds. Religion thus we naturally profess. Knowledge of God is likewise universal, which diverse nations diversely express. For truth, power, goodness, Men do worship all. Duties to parents, child, time, men, and place, all known by nature, but observed by grace. And that these are no positive made laws appears in this, 
since no consent of nations, no custom, time, or any other cause, can unto vice give virtue's estimation, or root out those impressions from our hearts, which God by nature unto man imparts. Yea, these impressions are so finely fixed in understanding, and the conscience too, that if our nature were not strangely mixed, but what we knew it could as easily do, men should, even by this spirit, in flesh and blood, grow happily adorers of the good. But there remains such natural corruption in all our powers, even from our parents' seed, as to the good, gives native interruption, since stains affection that will and will deed so that what's good in us and others too we praise but what is evil that we do our knowledge thus corrupted in our lives serves to convince our consciences within which sentence of record with self-love strives leads us for rest and remedy of sin to seek god and religion from without and free this condemnation which we doubt. Yet in this strife, this natural remorse, if we could bend the force of power and wit to work upon the heart and make divorce there from the evil which perverted it, in judgment of the truth we should not doubt. Good life should find a good religion out. But our infirmity which cannot brook this strong intestine and rebellious war in wit and our affections, makes us look for such religions as their imagined are. Hence grow these many worships, gods, and sects, wherewith man's error all the world infects. For when the conscience this religion fashions in blind affections, there it straight begets gross superstition. When in ingenious passions it molded is, a luster there it sets on the heart profane by politic pretense, both buying shadows with the world's expense. For they, God's true religion, which a state and being is, not taken on, but in, to bottomless hypocrisy translate. The superstitious doth with fear begin, and so deceived, deceives, and underrates his God, and makes an idol of his sin. The politic with craft enthralls mankind, and makes his body sacrifice his mind. Both in ourselves make us seek out a god. Both take self-love and fear for scale and measure. They both become their own and other's rod. The one takes care, the other wrong for pleasure. As many minds as many gods they make. Men easily change all they easily take. This superstitious ignorance and fear, this false religion offering sacred things, either to whom it should not, or elsewhere, the manner to the Godhead scandal brings. It fears sea, earth, sky, silence, darkness, light, and in the weak soul still hath greatest might. Which natural disease of mortal wit begets our magic and our star divines? Wizards, impostors, visions stand by it. For what fear comprehends not, it inclines to make a god whose nature it believes, much more inclined to punish than relieve. The reason is, when fear's dim eyes look in, they guilt discern, when upwards justice there reflects self-horror back upon the sin, where outward dangers threaten everywhere. Flesh the foundation is, fancy the work, where raked up and unquenched the evils lurk. For fear, 
whose motion still itself improves, hopes not for grace, but prays to shun the rod, not to do ill more than do well it loves, fashions God unto man, not man to God, and to that deity gives all without, of which within it lives and dies in doubt. The other branch is mere hypocrisy, the world's religion born of wit and lust, all which like hunters follow things that flee, and still beyond things found find something must. As God is boundless, endless, infinite, so seem these idols to the hypocrite. Wit there is priest, whose sacrifice doth make of all in heaven and earth to his desire. For from this wit God and religion take as many shapes, as many strange attires, as there be in the world degrees of change, which upon humors time occasion range. This teacheth all ambitious magistrates, on sins unquiet, humors how to build, idols of power to alter nature's rates, and by false fears and hopes make people yield their hearts for temples unto tyrants' laws, which zeal divine to human homage draws. And when spiritual lights which truth expound, once to the traffic of man's will descend the chains of truth, mankind no more is bound, whereby their hearts should up to heaven ascend, but vainly linked unto their tongues, which draw religion to a fleshly outward awe. And though this fear is a holiness in show, such as no eye of man can pierce the veil, but least God's household to contempt should grow, or this hypocrisy not still prevail, to raise them reverence above their worth. Blood, inquisition, question they bring forth. They draw the sword of power against her own, or else stir people up to war their kings. Both must be theirs, or both be overthrown. They bind man unto words, God binds to things. For these false heads of holy mothers see, Scepters to mitres their inferior be. Among ourselves likewise there many be That make religion nothing else but art, To master others of their own degree, Enthrall the simple well-believing heart. These have opposers, scorn obedient fools, affecting reign by education's tools. And though they serve ambitious princes' use, while they protect them like a nursing father, and while this common traffic of abuse mutually helpeth either side to gather, yet mark the end of false combined trust. It will divide, and smart the people must. For sure in all kinds of hypocrisy, No bodies yet are found of constant being, No uniform, no stable mystery, No inward nature, but an outward seeming, No solid truth, no virtue, holiness, but types of these, which time makes more or less. And from these springs strange inundations flow to drown the sea-marks of humanity with massacres, conspiracy, treason, woe, by sects and schisms, profaning deity. Besides, with furies, fiends, earth, air, and hell, they fit and teach confusion to rebel. But as there lives a true God in the heaven, so is there true religion here on earth. By nature, 
no, by grace, not got, but given, inspired, not taught, from God a second birth. God dwelleth near about us, even within, working the goodness, censuring the sin. Such as we are to him, to us is he. Without God there was no man ever good. Divine the author and the matter be, where goodness must be wrought in flesh and blood. Religion stands not in corrupted things, but virtues that descend have heavenly wings. Not heathen virtue, which they do define to be a state of mind by custom wrought, where sublime religion seems to refine affection, perturbation, every thought, unto a mens adepta which work spent, half of the days to human Hermes lent. For in this work man still rests slave to fame, to inward caution, outward form and pride, with curious watch to guard a rotten frame, safe, undiscovered from the piercing eyed, assiduous caution tyrannizing there, to make frail thoughts seem other than they are. Under this mask, besides, no vice is dead, but passion, with her counter-passion peased, the evil with itself both starved and fed, and in her woes with her vain glories eased, the work and tools alike, vain flesh and blood, the labor great, the harvest never good. For in this painted tomb, let man's own spirits really judge what that estate can be, which he, begetting in himself, inherits other than deserts of hypocrisy. Within the darkening shadows of his wit, hiding his stains from all the world but it. And if the habits of hypocrisy with such attention must be kept and wrought, if to mask vice be such a mystery as must with her captivity be sought, if to be nothing and yet seem to be so nicely be contrived and dearly bought, as vanity must in a phoenix fire smother herself to hatch her false desire, then judge, poor man, God's image once tis true, though now the devil's be thine own defection. Judge man, I say, to make this image new, and cleanse thy flesh from thy deep-dyed infection. What miracles must needs be wrought in you, that thus stand lost in all things but election? What living death, what strange illumination must be inspired to this regeneration? Must not the grace be supernatural, which in forgiving gives sanctification, and from this second chaos of his fall forms in man's little world a new creation? And must not then this twice-born child of heaven bring forth in life this new perfection given? Then man pray and obtain, believe and have, omnipotence and goodness ready be, to raise us with our Saviour from the grave, whence Enoch and Elias live it free. He made all good, yet suffered sin and death to reign, and be exiled again by faith. Then, till thou find this heavenly change in thee, of pride to meekness, atheism to zeal, lust to continence, anger to charity, thou feelest of thy election no true seal, but knowledge only, that poor infancy of this poor creature 
which must then appeal unto the Father for obedience, judging his hopes and condemnation thence. For what else is religion in mankind but raising of God's image there decayed? No habit, but a hallowed state of mind working in us that he may be obeyed? As God by it with us communicates, so we by duties must with all estates, with our Creator by sincere devotion, with creatures by observance and affection, superiors by respect of their promotion, inferiors with the nature of protection, with all by using all things of our own for others' good, not to ourselves alone. And even this sacred band, this heavenly breath in man, his understanding, knowledge is, obedience in his will, in conscience, faith, affections, love, in death itself a bliss, in body, temperance, life, humility, pledge to the mortal of eternity. Pure only where God makes the spirits pure, it perfect grows as imperfection dies, built on the rock of truth that shall endure, a spirit of God that needs must multiply. He shows his glory clearly to the best, appears in clouds and horror to the rest. Such was the soul in our first sire's creation, when man knew God and goodness, not the evil, far greater in the Godhead's incarnation, where truth subdued the sin that made the devil. She still is God's, and God forever one, both unbelieved in flesh and both unknown. Then man, learn by thy fall to judge of neither, our flesh cannot this spirit comprehend. Death and new birth in us must join together before our nature where it was ascend. Where man presumes on more than he obeys, their straight religion to opinion strays. Then, since tis true, we only here possess these treasures, but in vessels made of slime, religion we by consequence confess here to be mixed of base things and sublime, of native evil, supernatural good, truth born of God, and error of our blood. Yet gold we have, though much alloyed with dross, refining never perfect in this life, Still in our journey, meeting gain and loss, rest in our deaths, and until then a strife. And as our days are want, temptation, error, so is our zeal, wars, prayers, remorse, and terror. Such is the state of infants in new birth, first fed with milk, too weak for stronger food, who learn at once to know and do in earth, both enemy and impotent and good, must feel that our Christ can of his lose none, which unto grace makes grace and merit one. These be true antidotes against despair, cradles for weakness, stories for corruption, to read how faith begins to make her fair, by cleansing sensual sinks of interruption, whereby the throes of many thoughts spring forth, light only showing man is nothing worth. For this word, faith, implies a state of mind, is both our wooing and our marriage ring, the first we meet, and last but love we find a given hand that feeleth heavenly things, 
and who believe indeed god heaven and hell have passed in their chief hindrances of doing well then let not man too rashly judge this light nor censure god by his own imperfections what can give limits to the infinite when he by works will witness our election degrees i grant there be of will and might some to beget some only to inherit yet still the conscience must obey the spirit yea though god call his laborers every hour and pay the last and first with heavenly gain though he give faith beyond the law and power yet is god's nature where he is to reign his word is life the letter all man's fall that it without the spirit's measure shall this sacred word is the eternal glass where all men's souls behold the face they bring each sees as much as life hath brought to pass the letter can show life no other thing the heart's grace works to know what they obey all else profane god and the world betray this work is god's even his that works all wonder his arm not shortened and his goodness one whose presence breaks sin's middle wall in sunder and doth in flesh deface the evil's throne he is all gives all hath all where he is and in his absence never soul finds bliss End of section one You are listening to section two of A Treatise of Religion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. His Egypt wonders, here he doth exceed, For there he mixed with winds, rain, nature's line. Now by his spirit he doth blast our weeds, Immediate grace, true miracles divine, Guides not by fires and meteors night and day his wandering people how to move or stay but into sinners hearts shadows of death the saving light of truth he doth inspire fitteth our human lungs with heavenly breath our mortal natures with immortal fire he draws the camel through the needle's eye and makes the chosen's flesh die ere they die yet keeps one course with israel and us the flesh still knew his power and not his grace all outward churches ever know him thus they bear his name but never run his race they know enough for their self-condemnation his doing know him to their own salvation his church invisible are few and good the visible erroneous evil many of his the life and letter understood of these nor life nor letter dwell in any these make his word sect schism philosophy and from those from fishers called apostles be they do in praying and still pray in doing faith and obedience are their contemplation like lovers still admiring ever wooing their god that gives this heavenly constellation they war that finite infinite of sin all arts and pomps the error wanders in god is their strength in him his are not weak that spirit divine which life power wisdom is 
works in these newborn babes a life to speak things which the world still understands amiss the lie hath many tongues truth only one and who sees blindness till the sin be gone fools to the world these seem and yet obey princes oppressions whereat fools repine they know these crowns these theatres of clay derive their earthly power from power divine their sufferings are like all things else they do conscience to god with men a wisdom too book learning arts yea school divinity new types of old law-mongering pharisees which cursed in bondage of the letter be they know they pity and would fain advice the goodness moves them yet the wisdom stays from sowing heavenly seed in stony ways to you they cry o oh, you that hold the shrine as sent by god ye priests of chance and gain your charge is to distribute things divine o oh, do not lie for god and sin in vain reveal his word his mysteries expound else what he works you travail to confound you should be keys to let his will pass out bind sin and free repentance by his word fear those that scorn and comfort them that doubt what drowned pharaoh still is israel's ford wisdom above the truth was adam's sin that veil which christ rent off will you walk in observe faith's nature in these hallowed shrines both of the old and perfect testament works be her fruits her nature is divine infused by him that is omnipotent do we believe on him on whom we stay not can we believe on him whom we obey not his pen left two examples it is true first of his chosen how he grossly fell then of the thief born instantly anew vice raised to heaven perfection fallen to hell and of each nature therefore left not many lest hope or fear should overwork in any is it not then by warrants from above that who gives faith gives true obedience what other medium hath our flesh to prove that sin with god keeps no intelligence takes this from man the fruits of christ his death no it translates him into it by faith for though god gave such measure of his grace as might in flesh fulfil the second table yet sin against the first did quite deface god's image and to raise that who is able between the flesh and grace that spiritual fight needs father son and their proceeding might nay let us grant god would enable man after his calling to accomplish all from adam's sin who yet redeem him can or paul's transgression clear before his call but christ that comes to none of god's in vain the justest need him for the worst he is slain his life he makes example where he please to give his spirit which is to forgive what can the flesh assume itself in these since reason dies before his faith can live who knows god's power but where he sin removes what should restrain the almighty where he loves besides 
who marks god's course from our creation down unto christ shall by succession see bliss of the goodness evil's condemnation established by unchanging destiny the word is clear and needs no explanation only the counsel is a mystery why god commanded more than man could do being all things that he will and wisdom too why came our saviour if flesh could fulfil the law enjoined or if it must transgress whence took that justice this unequal will to bind them more to whom he giveth less here power indeed to wisdom must direct else light saves few and many doth detect strive not then wit corrupt and disobeying to fetch from popes stools powers commanding thrones doctrines of might that suffer no denying yet diverse as earth's tempers in her zones since christ's own heard him saw him live and die yet till he rose knew not the mystery pray then and think faith hath her mediation ask for thyself that spirit which may judge wait the decrees of thy regeneration count not without thy god nor do thou grudge limits and bounds of thine illumination but give account of that which god hath given since grace not merit with the law makes even and if thou seek'st more light to clear thy mind search not god's counsels in himself contracted but search his written word where thou shalt find that adam's fall was breach of law enacted by which in the stained womb the chosen seed together with the reprobate did breed the one showed forth the light which he received fashioned within him by the infinite the other served the evil was deceived and in that which condemned him took delight both states partakers of eternity in life or death as good or ill they be both had one school one form of education each knew one god but only one obeyed where in the odds was spiritual adoration and outward rites which ever have betrayed abel sought god alone cain would have more which pride was in the angels judged before thus when creation was a fresh tradition and miracle the proper ground of faith guiding the sin unto her true physician yes then we see sin multiplied death for him that made them men would not obey idols and sects ne'er had any other way men would be gods or earthly giants rather number their strength and strength their number is their doctrine sin which as it spreads doth gather this present world flesh seeks no other bliss as god by goodness save those souls he chooseth so hell condemns those wicked souls it useth now while both churches livid thus together parted by grace by miracles united the outward worship common was to either and both alike by benefits invited yet murmur and obedience proved them too yet only one would do thus though by life the spirit spirits trieth so as god's goodness by his expressed which goodness in the devils ever dieth yet god hath here more latitude impressed for unto those who only bear his name he gave such gentiles as denied the same 
but when with idols they profaned the land which he gave them for seeming to adore him when they that held by form even break that band and israel in the outward failed before him then came captivity that earthly hell planting the gentiles where his did dwell in this time's womb this uttermost defection of fleshly israel came the virgin's seed that rightfulness which wrought god's own election and in the flesh fulfilled the law indeed when doctrines miracles benefits proved vain then was this lamb ordained to be slain thus by defection from obedience successively both sin and sects have grown religion is a miracle to sense the new man of the old is never known and to those hearts whose gross sins do not die god's testaments are mere philosophy what latitude this to the world allows those souls in whom god's image was decayed then know when they perform such spiritual vows as underneath our saviour's cross are laid they that receive his wages bear his arms know only what avails us and what harms wherein to take thrones first as chief in might david's we wish of solomon's find some not in those wisdoms of the infinite but in the rest which bide more doubtful doom thrones are the world's how they stand well with heaven these powers can judge to whom such grace is given next that high priesthood which the spirit's fallen jew so prized and erroneously maintain ceased in him whose sacrifice was due to all the world by her defections stained small hopes this gives to our cathedral chairs the spirit's only choosing spiritual heirs again for such as strive to undermine the vanity of rome's o'erbuilt foundation with sin's ambition under words divine hoping to raise sects from her declination o oh, let them know god is to both alike the one he hath the other he will strike and in the world where power confirms opinion advantage disadvantage as they stand rome hath the odds in age and in dominion by which the devils all things understand the superstition is to warn a womb to raise a new church now to equal rome last for ourselves which of that church would be which though invisible yet was is shall for ever be the state and treasury of god's elect which cannot from him fall arks now we look for none nor signs to part egypt from israel all rest in the heart our three crowned mitres are but works of spirit faith key and sceptre our ambition love built upon grace we are and thence inherit temptation which in us doth purge and prove mortify regenerate sanctify and raise our old fallen adam to new adam's ways this word of life then let not fleshly man corrupt and unregenerate expound as well the mortal judge the immortal can or deafness finds the discords out of sound or creatures their creator comprehend which they presume that judge before they mend mix not in functions god and earth together the wisdom of the world and his are two 
one latitude can well agree to neither. In each men have their beings as they do. The world doth build without our God within. He traffics goodness, and she traffics sin. Schools have their limits, wherein man prescribes. What credit hopes truth there, which contradicts? States have their laws, all churches have their tribes, where sin is ever strongest and inflicts. For man is judge, and force still wisdom there. How can God thence expect a spiritual heir? But God's elect still humbly pass by these, make love their school and scale of righteousness, which infinite those hearts desire to please, while to the world they leave their wickedness. Sect and division cannot here arise, where every man in God is only wise. Can it then be a doctrine of despair to use the words or counsels of our God as they stand in Him, though they seem severe? Health of the chosen is the lost child's rod. Though flesh cannot believe, yet God is true, and only known where He creates anew. Things possible with man are yet in question. God's power, gifts, will, here faith's true bases be. All mediums else are but the sin's suggestion. The mover only makes our nature free. Faith and obedience he that asketh gives, and without these God's spirit never lives. Again in this strange war, this wilderness, these Egypt brick kills, from our straw deprived, God ever liveliest doth himself express, help being here from heavenly power derived. Affliction of the spirits made man's true glass, to show him God brings what he will to pass. Now in this fight wherein the man despairs between the sin and his regeneration, Faith upon credit never takes her heirs. God's wonder in us works her adoration. Who from the heaven sends his graces down to work the same obedience he will crown. This leads us to our Savior, who no more doth ask than he enables us to do. The rest he frees and takes upon his score. Faith and obedience only binds us to. All other latitudes are flesh and devil, to stain our knowledge and enlarge our evil. Offer these truths to power. Will she obey? It prunes her pomp, perchance plows up the root. Its pride of tyrants' humors doth allay makes God their Lord, and casts them at his foot. The truth they cannot wave, yet will not do, and fear to know, because that binds them too. Show these to arts, those riddles of the sin, which error first creates and then inherits. This light consumes those mists they flourish in, at once deprives their glory and their merit. Those mortal forms, molded of human error, dissolve themselves by looking in this mirror. Show it to laws, God's law the true foundation, proves how they built up earth and lose the heaven. Give things eternal, mortal limitation or ruling him from whom their laws were given. God's laws are right, just, wise, and so would make us. Man's captious, diverse, false, and so they take us. Show it to the outward church, strange speculation, for that hypocrisy to see the life. 
they that sell god for earthly estimation are here divorced from that adulterous wife for this truth teacheth mankind to despise them while god more justly for his own denies them offer these truths to flesh in general god in his power and truth they do confess but want of faith that venom of their fall despairs to undergo his righteousness they think god good and so his mercy trust yet hold good life impossible to dust only that little flock god's own elect who living in the world yet of it are not god is the wealth will empire they affect his law their wisdom for the rest they care not among all floods this ark is still preserved storms of the world are for her own preserved for their sake god doth give restraining grace to his seen church and to the heathen too sets sin her latitude of time and place that only she her own may still undo and where the sin is free to all as one he binds temptation to preserve his own so as though still in wilderness they live as gone from egypt suffer israel's care yet food and clothes that wear not out he gives of them that hate them they preserved are this grace restraining bounds the hypocrites whose ravine else might spoil the world of lights then man rest on this feeling from above plant thou thy faith on this celestial way the world is made for use god is for love sorrow for sin knowledge but to obey fear and temptation to refine and prove the heaven for joy desire thou that it may find peace in endless boundless heavenly things place it elsewhere it desolation brings end of section two end of a treatise of religion by folk greville this is a LibriVox recording.